Now we owe $15 trillion, going to $22 trillion, and they didn't cut enough. So this doesn't solve the problem. And that's the big thing. It doesn't solve the problem. The money lead that was then private citizen Trump in 2011, sounding the alarm, harping on a budget deal made under President Obama. But now President Trump is on track to do the same thing, ignoring all that past talk about fiscal responsibility and the need to cut spending and focus on reducing the deficit. Now he's applauding a new deal by congressional leadership. Their plan would let debt levels keep soaring well beyond the $22 trillion. And as CNN's Abby Phillip now reports for us, President Trump is not the only one who seems to be shrugging off the old days of the Tea Party. I'm confident we will. Congressional leaders projecting confidence that a two-year budget deal will have enough votes to pass. But some lawmakers are holding their breath that President Trump will stay behind it. We always hold our breath until it's something gets signed into law. Trump tweeting Monday night that the bipartisan plan had no poison pills and was a real compromise in order to give another big victory to our great military and vets. But there was no mention of it in his rambling speech today at a conservative teen conference. The president's social media endorsement aimed at easing some concerns on Capitol Hill that he might back away from the deal at the last minute. I think it's a, it's a deal that will get through. It isn't everything we hoped for, but it got through the debt ceiling. The deal pushes off another fight over the budget and debt until after the 2020 election and authorizes $1.37 trillion in spending each year for the next two years. Republicans touting the $45 billion increase in military spending. From a military point of view, it's much needed. It's the best I think we could do. And Democrats satisfied with the $56 billion in non-defense spending increases. But nothing in the deal addresses the federal deficit, which is nearing $1 trillion. Cutting spending around here is like going to heaven. Everybody wants to go to heaven, but nobody's quite ready to take the trip. Some conservatives not happy with the increased spending and ballooning deficit are already rejecting the compromise. I mean, do you like it? Are you going to vote for it? <laughs> I like it. So the president's aides are trying to tamp down a conservative rebellion over this bill by emphasizing that even though there is no money set aside specifically for the wall, there are also no restrictions on money in this bill being repurposed for the purpose of rebuilding the wall and building new wall at the border. Jake. All right, Abby Phillip at the White House, thanks so much. There are some Republicans sounding the alarm about this budget deal, but others sound like this. From a military point of view, it's much needed. It's the best I think we could do. Democrats exist. They run the House. It wouldn't be the one I would have written, but you have to, in a place like this where we have a divided government, try and get the best possible deal you can. So CNN's Chris Eliza wrote today, quote, the Tea Party was born February 19, 2009. It died officially July 22, 2019. Mary Catherine, do you agree? I think it may be a delayed obituary. <laughs> um, look... <laughs> I think it's clear that we've established there's no real match for me here uh, on the uh, on the with the parties and fiscal conservatives. As a as a fiscal conservative gal, you have to settle for like you used to have a party that was like a boyfriend who sort of pretended to like the thing you were into every now and then, and then another one that's like now nah, honest, but like we're not into any of your ideas. Mm -hmm. um, so now we've dispensed with the pretending on the Republican side essentially. And the irony is that. One of the reasons that you got Donald Trump, which is this unorthodox character in American politics, is because people were so fed up with neither Democrats nor Republicans doing what they said, but they ended up voting in a guy who definitely was not going to do any of the reining in of spending, none of the entitlement reforms, because he straight up said it. It was an abdication of that responsibility, and it will remain so. It's amazing, though. If you, if you had said to me three years ago, hey, Larry Kudlow is going to be the chief <laughs> uh, economic advisor. Mick Mulvaney, yes. uh, one of the leaders of the Tea yes. Party, is going to be uh, the president's chief of staff. And they're going to cut these budget deals <laughs> that are that basically could be cut under a, pre a Democratic president with a Democratic House and Senate. Well, well, Trump has never said that this was something that... Well, he said that he cared about this in the past, but it was never really his passion, right? And he didn't come <laughs> into office on this. And I think what it also shows is that maybe the public doesn't really care that much about this. I, I remember during the Tea Party days, uh, the heyday, there would be people just, you know, crying and talking about their grandkids and they're going to have to pay these debts. 
But now people are kind of shrugging, and I guess they, they're saying the grandkids can pay it, and we'll work it out on the next side. The and, next and Jeff, side. In, in 2016, when asked how long it would take him as president to eliminate the U.S. debt, then candidate Trump told The Washington Post, quote, I would say over a period of eight years. Well, we're a few years into that, and uh, it doesn't look like we're headed in the, that direction. We're certainly not headed in that direction. In fact, we're headed in the opposite direction. But you mentioned Mick Mulvaney. He was not involved in these um, uh, talks at all with Speaker Pelosi. I actually caught up with Speaker Pelosi um, on, on Monday afternoon as this was happening, and I asked her on Monday evening how this worked out. It seemed to be so smooth compared to most deals, and it was because she said she was working with Stephen Mnuchin, the Treasury Secretary. She said there were two overriding principles, the president's fear of rocking the stock market and hurting the borrowing authority. So if Mick Mulvaney had been involved in these negotiations, perhaps it wouldn't have gone so smoothly. But look, he owns it. He signs off on it. He's the chief of staff. But it is uh, hard to imagine that this would have happened under a Democratic administration without the Tea Party and others crying about it. Deficits matter except when a Republican's president. And, and uh, take a listen to Larry Kudlow, uh, the president's top economic advisor, just today. That right now, jobs are booming and consumer spending is really booming. So that bodes very well. And the president himself has said uh, if he's reelected, he will probably come down much tougher uh, on spending. So he'll take it seriously in the second term. Yeah, right. Uh, yeah, Hard stuff always I, happens I, yeah. I mean, <laughs> right. I mean, because the president has so much power. I, the thing about it is, is that th this has been a long-running issue where Republicans always accuse Democrats of being the big spenders, and then act like you know they 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 wouldn't be the big spenders when they're in power, and then they end up being bigger spenders than the Democrats were. I mean, this happened in the Bush administration. Um, you know, so I think that it's never really been about the spending. It's it's about the fact that there's a Democrat in power. And they don't like the priorities that they're spending money on, and so they're complaining about it. But they're not, I don't think, I honestly don't think they've ever been serious about it. Now, there are people like Mary Catherine who are serious about it, but I don't think the party itself has really been particularly serious about it because it's something that they just use to bludgeon Democrats with. And it, it is interesting, though, because $22 trillion, I mean, at some point, that's, some of that is going to have to be paid down. And yeah. your children, a my children. And debt crisis will cometh, right? There, yeah, there at some is, point. You can't play with fake future money forever, and embracing that ideology will lead you to mm -hmm. that place. And the, and the interest on the debt also consumes so much of the federal budget that we cannot spend on other items.